Hello and welcome. In this video we are going to learn how to use offset function in Excel. So we have prepared three separate examples to learn the offset together with some other functions in our example. So before going into the details of the first question, let me show you what offset function does. When we write offset, it asks us four different parameters, which are two are optional in the end. So the first parameter is the reference. We are going to refer our area. So offset function actually returns a cell or area. So let's say if we choose the reference here, it in the second parameter it asks us how many rows I am going to go down from your reference. And in the third parameter it asks, okay, I went down x rows, then how many columns I am going to go right. So we have chosen this cell C6 as a reference and let's say we are going to go four cells until we find J row. And let's say we will go one column to the right to find the age of J. Okay, and I leave the optional parameters blank for now. And you see we found the J age. Let's say if we made it five it's going to return eight one thing to notice here is for the last two parameters which will be useful for our later examples this also asks height okay i came here go down and go right and what is the height i am going to take only one cell or multiple cells height asks us how many rows i'm going to take so let's say three rows Starting from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, from 8, we are going to take these 3 rows and let's say width is only 1, only 1 column. Okay, this returns an uh, error because now we said that offset return an area and alone an area doesn't mean anything in Excel. So we can use this area to sum, for example. If we sum this, you will see it sums the, the numbers in the area we return with offset function. So we started from students, go down five cells, one, two, three, four, five, go down one, then go to the right one cell, then selected three cells in this region. So it turned 26. So we summed it up. Okay, basically we are going to do the same thing for the first example. Okay, it asks us first count the number of students by using count a function and then sum their ages by using offset and sum function. Okay, let's say we don't know how many students are there here, so we can just do count a function to find the number of students. Then we are going to sum their ages. If we, if we don't use the offset function, what what you do is sum their ages like this. But by using offset function, we can also define a dynamic range in Excel. So we change, we select the first cell as a reference. I don't want to count how many cells I'm going to go down like this. So I uh, select the number of students, which I found with count A. Oh, sorry. The, we do not go down in a row, but we are going to choose it like a height. So I choose it as a zero because I don't want to go down. I want it to start from here. These first three parameters are defining the starting uh, reference of our area. So I, I'm also going to leave the columns as zero. Now I can choose the height number of students. So I choose this one. And width is, I know, 1 only. And now this returns. I have to sum this in order to find the number of students, the ages of number of students. So offset returned us an area, and we summed that area with using the sum function. Okay, 
In the second example, there's a drop down box here. Nice. And mm, write your formula to find the average sales figures for selected month by using offset, match, and average function. Okay. Um, so it says that if this February is selected, it wants us to uh, sum these values. If March is selected, then it asks us to use these values to sum up. We can make it dynamic. So, and not summing, we are, we are going to take the average in the end. So, if you write offset, and let's say we start from here, it doesn't matter, we can start from here as well, or here. I start from here, and I'm, I don't know how many rows or how many columns I'm going to choose, but for the rows, I know that I'm going to go down only one row. So, I'm going to uh, sum or average these values. So I choose one for rows and for columns I uh, I want it to be dynamic according to my drop down selection. So I write a match function to use this value in this area. And now it's going to return me one or three or four, three or four. And I know that I start from here, but I know 8 is going to be 4 and width is going to be 1. And in the end, we have returned an area now. We are going to use the average function to find the average of these values. So now we have found an average value. We would have also summed the map. But there's a little problem here. For February, you see the average value is not the same with the one with uh, ours, but it is this one. The average value is equal to us because this match function returns, for example, if we look for the February in this area, it returns two. Basically, but we don't want two in this case because we have started from here. If it is February, it, it, we want it to return 1. If it is January, we want it to return 0. So 1 is going to be subtracted from the match return. Now, if we select March, for example, if we select April, you see the average is going to be the same with our uh, function result. So, this one subtracting is uh, somewhat critical when we use match function, so be careful when you use it. <coughs> okay, in the last example, we have the prices, the products, and their sales figures. These are not placed very well. For example, we have generally products in the leftmost column, then we have prices and then sales. But we may have these kind of cases, so it may be useful to for, uh, use offset and match, match functions in this case. So this is also a drop down. We can change it to anything we want. So these cells should be a dynamic uh, range. So it asks us to find the price of this product, of this product, selected product. So if we say offset starting from here and I don't know how many rows I'm going to go down because it is uh, going to be coming from this product selection. So I am going to use match function and use this row to find the exact match. So it's going to return me a number and I'm going to use this number to find how many rows I'm going to go down. I don't go any I don't want any column number. So you see camera doesn't have 422. Same issue also arises here. We have to subtract one from our selection. Or if you if you don't want to subtract one, you can start the match from here. Then you will have the correct match for the for your um, offset function. So be careful how you use it. I generally want 
these uh, references to be in the same uh, height slot I use this function I use the subtraction as a control method okay so we find we know our product and we are going to sum its sales up so we are going to use the offset to find the dynamic area dynamic range I choose here and again I don't know how many rows I'm going to go down I'm going to use a match function to find the correct number of rows to go down and the starting is starting column is going to be this one so I don't go anywhere height is going to be only one row so I one and width is going to be four rows uh, four columns to the right so I four here so we have now uh, an area now we are going to sum our area with this and again the same problem here so I am going to extract a subtract one from my sum uh, match function and now camera has 294 cells and for example bats have 416 cells and I should camera and let's check our results okay everything seems good thanks for watching in the next video we are going to see how to use the indirect function in Excel so keep following